What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today I want to share with you four books that have shaped me as a developer. Now I love to read and I could go off on many books in different genres, but today I'm sticking to development. And by development, I mean the broad scope of the word. So you might be thinking I'm going to list all the books that made me a good programmer, all the programming principles and all of that. Well, I'm not going to do that because if you Google that, every single blog post lists like the same 10 books. And I want to go past that. I want to go bigger, not just programming principles, but the programming career itself. So I found four books that I think have shaped me as a developer, and I wanna share it with you because I think you'll benefit from reading them as well. Let's get started. Number one, Soft Skills, The Software Developer's Life Manual by John Sanmez. Now, I did a whole video on this. I'll put a link above, but this book opened my eyes to so many opportunities. If you've listened to my coding story video, you'll know that I wasn't raised in an entrepreneurial thinking family. I was told to get a good job, keep it for 40 years and retire. Well, that doesn't work anymore. It's a different ball game out here. And this book put the power in my hands that I was never given. I decided to learn to code. I had just been a cog in the wheel before that and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know that I could pave my own path. But with this book, I became the business that was hired by companies out there instead of the other way around. I learned about professionalism, how to hack the learning of tech things, how to pass interviews. I learned about productivity, accountability, and even financial tips in mindset. It's a book that does it all and it's aimed at developers. There is information for development and then there's information about the life of a developer in seeing yourself as the business, as the asset for companies instead of the other way around. And I feel like with this book, I grew up in a sense from all of the little things that were holding me back in life. This book actually led me to freelancing first in building my blog and building a YouTube channel before I got into the corporate dev space. And whatever you think about John Sanmez now in his whole bulldog mindset or whatever he's doing, he was on point with this book. It is legendary. Number two is The One Thing by Gary Keller. Now, I I did a whole video on this book also because it was so important in my career because I credit this book to my success as a developer since deciding to go this route at 34 years old. And in summary, the author helps explain how to stay focused on that one big goal that you want. And it's done by breaking it down into smaller goals. He calls it goal setting to the now. And it works like this. Say you have a goal. In one year, I want to get a job as a full stack web developer. Well, the way this book puts it is that's your one big goal. And that's a year out from now. So you need to look back, say three months and say in nine months, what should I be doing to meet that goal at one year? And maybe it's finishing the curriculum and starting to apply for jobs. That gives me three months to apply for jobs and meet that goal. Then you go back again to six months. What should I be doing at six months? Maybe I should be studying algorithms. Then you go back to three months. What should I be doing at three months to meet that six month, nine month and one month goal? And you go all the way back to the month to the week in the very day. So that every day when you go to study programming, it's aligned with all of your goals going forward. I know this sounds really complicated, but it's not. In fact, if you check out that video that I did on this book, I explain it there in the context of development. And I also give you a cheat sheet to print out and fill out on your own. I'll make it easy for you. So make sure you check that video out, get the download, fill it out, meet your goals. And I've used this over and over throughout the years. I used it to learn to code. I used it to grow a YouTube channel. I used it for tech certifications. Okay. In six months, I want to get this AWS solutions architect cert. What should I be doing in three months, in two months, in one month this week, today to lead up to that? You just pick that one goal and goal set to the now. And again, that assures that each day you're focused on that one goal in making progress without straying from the path. And speaking of incremental progress, today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, is designed in such a way that with just 15 minutes a day, you can begin to master big concepts. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant's fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, AI, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills or keep those skills sharp. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you're having a hard time nailing down data structures like linked lists or counting operations. Brilliant will help you visualize and internalize these concepts in an engaging, interactive way. Today, I spent 10 minutes working through a section on nested repetition and solving the logical challenges within it. 
And like I said, Brilliant can help you solidify these coding skills and concepts that apply across different programming languages. You can get started today for free for 30 days and get 20% off of an annual plan by using my link below. That link is brilliant.org slash Travis Media. Now back to the video. So that's The One Thing by Gary Keller. Number three is The Phoenix Project. Now this book is considered the DevOps Bible. It's a fiction book. It's considered the DevOps Bible. And I read it when I took my first SRE job because I felt like I had no clue what I was doing, especially after the first week when I was like, Ansible who? Well, it's a fictitious book about a company called Parts Unlimited. And they're stuck in the ways of the past. They're going downhill financially. Their stock's plummeting. And their IT department is a wreck. And the IT manager is promoted and asked to turn this whole thing around. And this place is in horrible shape. All kind of critical issues are happening. Even the payroll system goes down and people aren't getting paid and it makes the news and it's just crazy. But then he meets up with this guy that starts to coach him through revamping the IT department with modern DevOps practices. The department was stuck in the past. He comes through and says, here's what you need to do and helps him implement a whole bunch of steps to turn the company around. But the story is very practical and he shows how an IT company can turn things around to become more effective, to become more mature, more resilient, to move faster, to be more secure, and win. It's a real gem, and I'll suggest that you listen to it on Audible if you're into audiobooks. I'm big into audiobooks, but it's kind of long from what I remember, and the audiobook was perfect. I would rather listen to that kind of stuff in that genre than read it anyway. All right, number four is The Pragmatic Programmer. Now, this book is over 20 years old, and there's something about older coding books that I like. It seems that while technology's gotten better and flashier and easier to use, the old coding principles are getting brushed under the rug. And I have to admit something, I haven't finished reading this book yet. We're reading it together in the Travis Media community, and it's just been a game changer so far. It feels like the principles in this book are filling in all of these gaps that I've had over the years that I didn't know I have, coming from a non-traditional self-taught route. There's all kind of practical wisdom from avoiding duplication, learning to decouple, refactoring, testing, estimating time, accountability, setting expectations, and more. All of those important things that make you a good career successful developer. Lots of wisdom found in that book. So that's four. Like I said, I could add more books to this and maybe I'll do another video with a little bit different twist, but I wanted to keep this on the shorter side. So let me ask you, what coding books have impacted you in your development career? Let me know below. Let's have a discussion. And if you found this video helpful, like always, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.